In the last video, we looked at momentum, and uh, I just wanted to wrap it up and talk about impulse. Impulse in physics is normally given by a letter J, um, but for some reason in the physics SL and HL curriculum, they don't require you to know what letter we use for impulse. So it suffices to just say that impulse, and this is an equation on, uh, in your data booklet. Uh, it says impulse equals F delta T, it says that's also equal to M delta V. So this is the equation uh, for impulse. What this really means, and this is not on your uh, data booklet, but what this really means, it's a change in momentum. So an impulse happens, uh, let's say if you hit something. If I actually you know, give a hit to something, the, the force that that something feels is not just you know, sort of a blip. It actually has time when there's less force, then there's more force, then there's less force again. So in other words, if we looked at a graph of, let's say, force versus time. Okay, so this could be time in seconds. Uh, this could be force in newtons. And uh, by the way, impulse is going to have the same units as momentum. And you can just work it out. It's going to be, you know, kilogram meters per second. And it turns out if you're careful with this, this is also going to be the same thing because a force is also a kilogram meter per second squared. Uh, so when you multiply that by time, you get just kilogram meters per second. But if we look at this graph right here, let's say I have something getting hit and it maybe does, let's say it does this shape here. So let's say that means when I start hitting it, you know, there's not much force on it. Then, you know, there's some maximum force, then it goes down again. This shape, by the way, it could have a lot of different shapes. But let's just say this was it. Well, the impulse then is just the, if you look at this carefully, this is F and this is delta T here. Right? This could be a change in time. So if it's F times delta T, that means that we could say that the force is the area under an F delta T graph. That's the key thing here to use. Okay, so this right here I think is the important thing to sort of take home here is that impulse is the area under an F delta T graph. In other words, the impulse is going to be this area here in this case. The reason why it's the area is because when you take an area, you multiply a height times a width. In other words, F times T. If we were taking the gradient of something, it would be F over T. And it's not F over T. Notice it's F times T. So anytime you see something with units like that, you can actually just, uh, if you do a graph of it, the area is going to have units of this times this. And that's precisely what we're doing. So impulse is the area under an F delta T graph. So that's it for impulse. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is work. Now work is actually uh, given by this equation here. So W equals F S cos theta. It's actually more complicated than that, but in this case, we normally just write it like this right here. So uh, this is the equation for work. And I'd better define a few of the variables, right? It's always important to do that. So uh, we've got W, that's the work. And it's normally the work done by or to something. And it's measured in joules, so it's a unit of energy. And it's a scalar. So work here doesn't have a direction, it's just a scalar. Uh, however, the force, that's F, and that's measured in Newtons. We've got S, we've seen that before, that's our good old friend displacement. Yeah, that's going to be measured in meters. And the angle, uh, theta, that's going to be the angle between uh, the force and the displacement. And the angle, of course, is going to be written in units of me, uh, degrees. Now, this force here we talk about, I like to say this, that this force is the applied force. I think that's the key thing here, is that you have to apply a force. But normally it's just written like this, that F is the force but I like to think of it as the applied force because you actually have to uh, give a force in order to do some sort of work. Now the word work, it's actually a form of energy. 
Okay, so that's important to keep in mind. Um, and energy is not created or destroyed, it just changes shape, you know, just changes form. So in this case, if you do work, this isn't like, you know, if you have a job, I don't know, uh, at a store somewhere and you say, oh, I went to work. That's not what we mean here. Uh, although I do remember years and years ago, I was a, uh, a bus boy at a hard rock cafe in, uh, in Canada. And I remember there my job was to take kegs of beer from the basement to the top floor. And I was uh, studying physics at the time. I remember there I did go ahead and calculate the work done by me against gravity. So uh, this right here, what we do is whenever we do work, it's because we've applied a force and we've displaced something. So um, I'm not going to have any written examples, but I can show you something. So what if I have, um, I'm just going to grab a physics book here. So let's just say I have this physics book here in my hand. Right now, as I stand still, am I giving an applied force? Yes. I'm giving an upwards force. So there is an upwards force. But at the moment, if I'm not displacing this book, if I'm just leaving it still, then although the force is something, displacement is zero. And zero times anything else makes it zero. In other words, if I'm standing here, my work done is zero. Now if I raise it like this, so as I raised it, what happened there? I had an applied force that was up, upwards still, I'm still holding the book. So I still have an upwards applied force, but then I had a displacement that was upwards. So if I did that, I have a positive work. In other words, I could just multiply F times S. Now the angle between these two things, between my uh, applied force and my displacement, the angle between them is zero. And I don't know if you remember this, but the cosine of zero is one. So in other words, if you're just going straight up, it's just F times S. In other words, your force times your displacement to bring it up. And as I bring it down, what happens then? Well, you might think it's still positive because you'd think, oh, I have a negative applied force, but I don't. In order to bring it from here to here, I still have an upwards applied force. Okay, so as I go from here to here, force is still applied upwards. However, my displacement is down. And so what I could say then is that the angle between them is 180 degrees. And that's why the cos of uh, 180 is negative one. So that's, what, that's a way to look at this. Now a trick question could be, what if I just take this book and I walk across with it? What's the work done then? Well, my applied force is still upwards because I'm still holding the book. Even if I'm displacing it, I'm still holding it upwards. So I still have an applied force that's up. And as I carry it this way, I have a displacement that's that way. So if look at my applied force and my displacement, the angle between those is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. That's why when I take this and move it across, I technically don't do any work. Now in this case, when I'm looking at this, I'm actually doing work against gravity. So right now, for example, to lift this book from here to here, I'm actually working against gravity. I'm using energy to get this thing up. The good news is that this energy can then be converted, which means if I let it go, obviously it'll fall down. Why? I've given it energy, right? I've given it energy. And so this is uh, something that's really key here is when we talk about work, work is a form of energy. And so when you bring something up or down or whatever, it actually doesn't matter about the path you've taken. It just depends on the uh, height that you've done. Now, uh, what's kind of fun is what I used to do with my students is uh, do um, a horsepower lab. So there what I would do is have students actually uh, run up a bunch of stairs. And if we could figure out the vertical height that they've gone up, right? If this is some sort of height, well, then we can figure out then, you know, if they have run up the stairs like this, or they run from here to here, if we can actually time it and see uh, how long it took them, we can actually calculate, well, their work done against gravity. So in that sense, then their work done is going to be the force that they've applied. In this case, if they go up, they have to apply a force that's equal to, this is going to be cool because uh, we can use um, Newton's second law. The force that they've done is their mass times the acceleration due to gravity. That's the force and times the displacement, which is H. So in this case, the work done against gravity is MGH. You might recognize that that's the equation for potential energy or gravitational potential energy. So that's the work done.
And then if you want to find out the horsepower that you've generated, all you have to do is you have to time it. So you have to see, well, how long does it take to do this? And it turns out there's a nice definition for power. That power is just work over time. In other words, if you calculated, you know, there, if you use your own mass, multiply that by acceleration due to gravity, so 9.81, multiply that by the height that you've gone up, and you divide that by the time it took you, well, that actually tells you your power in watts. And of course, you can just convert that to horsepower. So what we were doing is we were actually, the question that I'd asked the students, it was a very open-ended thing. I just said, would you make a good horse? Uh, because we were looking at how much horsepower do you generate. And this is precisely how we uh, measure power, is because of a work over time. So the key thing that we're going to be using later on with power is that it's related to work, and work is done against gravity in this case, in uh, these cases here. But work doesn't just have to be against gravity. You can be working against something else, like uh, in thermal physics, you can be doing work for or against a system or a surrounding. But anyway, that's how we can use uh, impulse as well as work.